the best. Uh, uh, that character is very near and dear to my heart. It, it had a genesis, a small piece of it from my own life. Uh, but uh, Bob was just wonderful. We had a real tough time finding an actor to play that because we had high hopes for it and uh, for the part. And uh, and uh, Jay Sandridge had gone to New York uh, and put some actors on tape for us. And Bob was one of them after. We had been to New York before, a couple of us, I don't remember who, me, me and Paul maybe, and uh, come back with people. and. And Jay went again because we were, you know, we'd been to Chicago, we'd been all through LA, and we just weren't finding the guy. And uh, Jay came back with that piece of tape, and uh, it's very hard to get a job off of tape, very, very hard. And uh, he had it. He had, uh, there were, you know, all throughout the audition, because it's never perfect on those silly auditions on tape, but there were glimmers, and you could see, oh, he's going to be. And he came out, and he read for us, and he was great. And the network was unsure. It was a battle to get him cast in that part. What were you looking for? Just that that attitude, that irreverence, that uh, uh, um, cockiness, the uh, the tenderness. In my, my favorite relationship in the world was his and Jessica's. If I'd have had my way, and I tried, because we were we were going we were getting the axe, and it was a question of how we were going to go out. And uh, that was the greatest love story in the piece by the, end of the, by the end of the series, was Jessica and Benson's relationship. These are two people who truly cared about each other. And I always wanted to see them get together. And that was really how I wanted to end the show. But we, didn't, we ran out of time. We kind of had to slam some episodes together, and it just kind of ends. But I would have uh, taken it all the way there. Well, that was pretty clear that he was a breakthrough character, and uh, uh, it was suggested that we do a spin-off. And uh, it was a question of where to put him, how to put him, and, uh, you know, Benson was always the smartest guy in the room. And uh, um, so we thought we'd put him in the world of politics and, and uh, have him run the household of the governor's mansion, who supposedly was a relative of Jessica's, Jessica Tate, Catherine Hellman's. Uh, character. Uh, so James Noble was the governor who played it brilliantly as kind of a, a dear but not so smart governor and his uh, and uh, Rene Auberginois was a wonderful, wonderful foil for Benson. A pompous fellow took himself way too seriously and, <clears throat> and Inga Swenson was just killer, killer funny as the, as the Teutonic uh, Housekeeper, uh, and it was just—it was just a great canvas to put Benson in. Um, it always disappointed me because, you know, by the end of that se by the end of the series, he was governor. He literally started as the so-called major domo of the mansion, and and became the governor. And it was clear from the very beginning he was the smartest man in the mansion, and always did the right thing and always helped make the best decisions. And not to mention that the comedy was fairly strong. But the black community did not embrace that show in the end. At some point in time, they decided that this was television making another black person a butler. And uh, so the show Benson was not embraced by the, by the more, uh, the upper echelon of the black community. And to this day, that show suffered because of it, and, it, and it's not looked back on fondly uh, because of it.